I'll go ahead and hand it over to Dr. Choi. He is over at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He's been working and partnering with CII for years, specifically on the topic of modularization. You're in very good hands today. I'll go ahead and pass it over to him and let him tell you more. All right, thank you, Jenny. Hello, everyone. Today, in this webinar, I will introduce and demonstrate the research team 396 modularization business case analysis tools. My name is Jinook Choi, Associate Professor at UNLV. I am the Principal Investigator of the Research Team 396, Modelization Business Case Analysis. And I'm very excited to provide this webinar to you all on behalf of the team. Here's the agenda of the webinar. Uh, after explaining the background uh, briefly, I will introduce and demonstrate the tools. As I have prepared comprehensive slides, if you have any questions during the webinar, please ask them at the end of the webinar or leave your questions in the chat box and I will go over them um, uh, during the Q&A session. So let's start with a brief background of this webinar. Uh, I'd like to start with the webinar with the industry problems we're facing. Uh, the demand for increased efficiency uh, from projects in the heavy industrial sector continues to rise, compressing time to market expectations. The industry leaders need to understand how to respond to these challenges and take advantage of the industry's best implementation tools. And foremost, among the best available techniques is the concept of modernization. And although modernization is far from new or complicated, its implementation strategy is still not well understood, properly planned, or executed effectively. To tackle these problems, CII challenged research team 396 to address an essential research question. When is the appropriate time for modernization planning and how should a company develop a business case to support the modernization decision? And we had a variety of owners, contractors, service providers, and academics with an average of 23 years of industry experience and all with modernization experience. In response to this question, the team provided the following solutions. Standardized modular terminologies and definitions, modularization barriers and barrier breakers, recommended modularization timing, modularization business case analysis tool for opportunity framing, the second tool for assessment and selection, lastly, ESC modularization assessment tool. In this webinar, I will introduce these three tools However, just to give you an idea on other solutions, first, standardized modular terminologies and definitions. The team defined or updated their terms currently used in the industry. Second, modularization barriers and barrier breakers. The team identified the top 10 barriers for implementation of modularization in capital projects and how best to overcome these barriers. Third, recommended modularization timing. The team recommended timing points for considering mobilization during early activities to increase the chance of successful mobilization execution and to realize the full benefits of mobilization. Based on Team 396 artwork, the final report and the implementation resource are published and now available at CII website. The final report, which only includes the one report, uh, presents the essence of the research findings including other three solutions uh, that I will not present today, whereas implementation resource 396-2 includes a business case analysis guide and three tools. If you're interested in, in learning all six solutions for business case analysis for mobilization, please uh, check the final report or watch research team 396 presentation on YouTube, which was delivered at CI Annual Conference 2023. You can find it easily by searching modernization RU experience on Google or YouTube. It is also available on the knowledge base. The report of implementation resource provides the three new software tools and uh, give practical guidelines on how to use them. In today's webinar, I will introduce and demonstrate these three tools. 
Now, the first tool, Model JSON Bin's case analysis tool for opportunity framing. This is the first of two Model JSON Bin's case analysis tools. Research Team 396 developed uh, this tool to help users to make appropriate decisions about whether to use modernization by reviewing high level key drivers and other considerations during early project phases. The tool also helps users learn key enablers or issues with modernization and overcome or mitigate barriers during early project phases. Research Team designed this tool with several goals provide an easier, informative, and user-friendly approach to modernization, prevent a black box decision, but limit the user's ability to manipulate the tool, address new and emerging drivers that have not been considered by previous modernization tools, such as environmental, social, and governance. The tool is used during early stages of a project, starting during opportunity framing and no later than early assessment. While this primarily targets heavy industrial capital projects, its concepts can be applied to practically any project that is considering some types of offsite pre-assembly. This tool introduced the user to the principles of modernization through this uh, simple to use guide. As the user responses to the guide's 18 questions, the tool provides details that shows the potential benefits of embracing the modernization philosophy. This tool makes the user think about specific details of the proposed project. Lastly, it forces the users to respond to each question with the decision. Whereas uh, this tool is not hard to use, and it is not a quantitative tool, and it will not provide the answer in terms of cost, schedule, or other details. Lastly, the tool is not an end all in terms of modular philosophy or analysis. The user must follow it with the modularization business case analysis tool for assessment and selection, which is the second tool, and additional analysis beyond the tool in the user's organization. The tool has four tasks introduction, project information, modernization drivers, and modernization considerations. The introduction tab gives information about the tool's background, its primary goal of and scope, when to use it, and instruction on how to use it. Research team strongly recommends that every user should read this section before attempting to use the tool in order to gain the maximum benefits. The project information tab is where the users enters basic information about the project. The modernization drivers tab is ta that tab where the evaluation begins. This tab prompts the users to evaluate the pro their project in terms of the 12 modernization drivers identified by research team. Each of 12 modernization drivers has been configured into an essential question about how the driver relates to the specific project being analyzed. A description of each driver is included to help the user determine the applicability of the driver. After reviewing the question and its description, the user must choose the most appropriate input pull-down option in the input column based on their project parameters. As each input option is selected from the pull-down option, the tool will automatically provide the expected results details with further explanations and recommendations. Also, it is recommended that the user input project information for the specific modernization drivers at the end of the column. Here's an example of detailed information on modernization drivers. In this example, the question asks, what is the project's economic productivity factor difference? The description wise the information on how to calculate it. If the economic productivity factor is one, the results, details, and the recommendations will be presented in the tool. Likewise, that you can find the full list of all the details in the tool or 
the implementation resource report. After user you finish this uh, reviewing drivers, the modelization consider considerations tab gives six more topics to review. In the same, it laid out the drivers. The tool presents the six considerations as a series of questions and short descriptions to help the user understand what is being evaluated and how to perform the evaluation. These considerations are easy to overlook during planning, but users should review them for a comprehensive assessment. Again, the user must choose the most appropriate pull-down input option based on project parameters. Once each response has been selected, the tool automatically provides its expected results and details. Similar to the before, this is an example of modelization considerations. In this example, the question asks, does the project have a local labor content requirement greater than 30%? The description indicates that if the site is not specified, the team recommends performing this analysis on all options to compare the local content requirements for each option. Location options could have different local content requirements that could affect the result of the evaluation. If the answer is yes, the results details will be presented in the tool. Again, check the tool or the implementation resource for the full list. Once you complete the tool, you will get the results. As a separate tool, the ESG modernization assessment tool, which is the third tool that I'm going to present today, can be used concurrently with this tool to address the ESG consideration that are becoming increasingly important in all projects. Research team emphasized that receiving one, at least one, or more positive results from this tool should compel the user to consider implementing modernization on their project. This is done by, by continuing with a, a more quantitative follow-through analysis using the modernization business analysis tool for assessment and selection, which is the second tool. Now, the second tool, the modernization business case analysis tool for assessment and selection. This tool is a powerful tool designed to help users determine the optimal extent of modernization as a percentage for projects. This tool offers a comprehensive analysis of the costs and savings that result from varying percentage of modernization. This knowledge empowers users to identify the optimal level that will result in the project successful completion with minimal expenses and maximum projects. By providing valuable insights and data-driven recommendations, this tool facilitates informed decision making, ultimately leading to improved project outcomes and enhanced costliness. However, the user will need to have a motor execution and design knowledge to effectively provide the information and data required to complete this tool. And the goal should be to develop the business case for optimum utilization by identifying the optimal work hours to move offsite, which the CI research team 283 asks you to do. However, at that time, the research team 283 was not able to provide the tool. Thus, this tool fills the gaps and helps you to accomplish it. In terms of recommended timing, the tool should be used during late, uh, the later assessment and selection phases. This tool is an entry-level analysis tool for quantitatively identifying the potential cost savings that can be realized by implementing modernization. It highlights which key factors need to be examined to determine the potential benefits and cost of modernization. It walks the user through a systemic approach for determining cost saving potential 
with each step leading into and supporting the next. However, this tool is not a guarantee of a success at modernization. Success only comes with the successful implementation of a fundamental shift in the execution of the project. Also, it does not have all the answers. The decision-making framework it provides must be supplied with project-specific data. And it is not meant to be a one and done approach. It should be used early and often, updating whenever significant new or revised information has been identified or developed. And it does not replace the user's company's current project economic analysis. Lastly, by itself, the tool will not provide a project set with issues of poor planning and misalignment of project drivers. This tool consists of seven main tasks, introduction, product information, mode yard selection, mode concept, percent modernization, input, and summary. And these and, and three references reference tasks. Users are directed to consult the reference tabs as details develop. The introduction tab gives information about the tool's background, its goal and scope, and instruction on how to use the tool. The product information tab asks the user to enter basic information, the evaluator's name, evaluator's date, project name, project location, project type, whether a greenfield or brownfield, infrastructure with new or existing module offloading facility or a heavy haul road, total work hours to complete the work scope, and the project total installed cost based on a traditional stick build approach from historical data in millions. The total work hour base means the total site construction work hours required to complete the work scope being analyzed for a project by using a traditional stick build approach. The next step is selecting right module yards. As you can see in this figure, even though this, figures, uh, this figure does not include all the module yards in the world, there are many potential module yards out there to consider. The module yard selection tab helps the user determine the optimal location for module yard based on related work hour costs and other evaluation factors. Users can enter labor productivity factor and the all-in rate of the project site and several possible module yard locations to calculate the relative work hour cost and the economic productivity ratio. The tool automatically ranks the module yard locations based on the economic productivity ratio, giving users a clear overview of the optimal locations. Note that user is not required to know the exact module yard contractors at this point, just the proposed locations that the project would like to analyze. The lower half of this worksheet is a qualitative analysis metrics for comparing the different fab uh, module yards. The user can also compare other factors like distance from yard to site, labor, safety records, capabilities, size of owner management team required, weather, political factors, ESG factors, duties and taxes, supply chain, jurisdictional requirements, and others. After all these factors have been considered, the user can adjust their decision. To learn more why you need to consider these factors to determine the optimal yard, check uh, CI implementation resource 283-2 or for new book on modernization by Cluck and Choi. 
Next, the module concept tab asks the user to enter the basic project module concept for three analysis scenarios. Users are required to provide information such as site location type, module yard location type, and transportation method. Distance between site and proposed module yard locations, and vertical mile for sea transportation, and kilometers for land. Transportation constraints, module size opportunity, vessel type, and whether it is an existing or new module offloading facility and hobby, heavy haul road. Users can also use to a linked reference tab to access detailed information on module size opportunities and vessel type insight. The module yard, um, the module concept tab can also be used to perform sensitivity analysis on utilizing different module sizes, depending on what the site location can manage and the different module categories and plot layouts. The next step in using this tool is estimating the percent modularization. This percentage will depend on details about the facility, such as equipment size, whether the layout is stick built or modular, is dynamic machinery is being placed on modules, will the project is local electrical and controls or centralized substations, and so forth. The percent of modularization takes into consideration the module installation and interconnects in addition to the work that cannot be modularized. For example, large equipment, earthworks, foundations, and underground, which is part of the stick build percentage. Therefore, there can never be 100% modularization because some forms of site construction work will always be required. This percent modularization tab helps the user calculate the percent of modularization based upon three scenarios entered in the module concept tab. This tab provides two methods to use these details to estimate the percent modularization. The first method, the method one, uses research team 396 references. When the user selects this, this strategy, uh, the strategy and module size for each scenario using method one, the tool provides a recommended range for percent modularization that research team prepared. The tool allows the user to select among three modularization strategies, pre-assemblies and PAR only, stick build layout pre-assembly, and module layout pre-assembly and uh, uh, PARs, uh, 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 PABs, VPUs, and VAUs. Similarly, there are four module size options small, uh, medium, large, and mega. Based on the user selection, uh, selected modularization strategy and module size, the tool provides a recommended range for percent modularization. Research team created the percent of modularization table to provide detailed information for method one. The user can click the for research team reference percent modularization button to check the percent of modularization table. Method two is manual. In this method, the user enters the work scope description or located site construction work hours for a respective work scope and percent modularization of each scope for all three scenario based on module size and categories. In the select method section, the user chooses between method one and two for each scenario. The tool then automatically calculates an estimated percent modularization and estimated percent stick build using the value, which is percent modularization, from the selected method for further analysis. 
These estimates are crucial in calculating extra costs and savings. Step is the main, the input tab, and it has four sections. Auto calculate the key information, expected savings, expected additional costs, and additional benefits. The tool automatically updates the basic information, which are locked and made in gray cells on the main modularization yard location and modularization options for all three scenarios based on inputs to the percent modularization tab. As a side feature, users can capture the assumptions they made in the green cell. The user then provides additional expected savings and costs in three scenarios. Modularization is expected to have five key savings, labor cost savings, including camp cost savings, schedule savings, risk or contingency benefits, reduced site footprint benefits, and other benefits. Similarly, the following seven expected additional costs are included in the input tab. Module water transportation and logistic costs, module land transportation and logistic costs, steel materials and labor costs, module offloading facility, module yard construction management team costs, engineering and home office costs, and other costs. As you can see on the second column, the tool also provides detailed descriptions to help users to calculate them. I'm not going to read all of this, but there is the example of descriptions on how to calculate costs. Research team tried their best to provide the explanation or additional information on how to calculate them. Please uh, check the full the detail in the report. There are some also additional benefit that uh, should be considered. And here is the example on how to calculate the safety benefits. The safety benefits can be calculated by comparing the estimated uh, project injury cost at the site with the stick bill against the same cost uh, for a motor approach. The estimated uh, project injury cost can be calculated by multiplying the average injury, direct and indirect cost, and the estimated number of injuries based on the historical injury rate at the site or module yard. You can get these historical uh, injury rates uh, from, uh, from the historical uh, data or directly from the module yard. The summary tab provides the assessment results with a key information. For example, total estimated savings, total estimated cost, and estimated module overall total and so cost for three different modernization strategies. These results are based on the data provided in the input tab. The summary tab shows project scenario particular key cost impacts, the best module option, which is the cheapest total is all cost, and visually represent them with the graph comparing the estimated overall total installed cost for a stick build versus molar for all scenarios. In this example, the scenario two will uh, have the lowest estimated molar uh, TIC, thus it is the best option. The next, the last tool is the ESG modernization assessment tool. The ESG, Environmental, Social, and Governance modernization assessment tool helps the users determine an appropriate modernization strategy that mitigates or benefits ESG-related issues. The ESG tool generates impact scores for the level of modernization which is low, medium, or high, 
by assessing the potential impact of, of the modernization strategy on each ESG factor. The tool also assists users by identifying the network was lost and then just reestablished. The research team recommends utilizing the ESG modernization assessment tool concurrently with the other two tools. First and foremost, this tool is an educational tool that can acquaint the user with the intricacies of an ESG and modernization evaluation. It gives the user options for rating the various ESG factors with respect to a specific project. It also gives us the user the flexibility to adjust the relative importance of these factors by adjusting their weights in the scoring. Lastly, it uses uh, these weights to develop a combined score that helps the user determine the best project execution in terms of various pre-assembly options. Beyond this relative uh, qualitative comparison, this tool does not provide a quantitative uh, cost analysis. Hopefully, the CI can uh, initiate a new research team to develop a quantitative analysis tool. It does not identify the cost or impact of any ESG option, and it does not provide guidance on how to combine or group ESG in initiatives. And its score cannot be used or compared to any other ESG tools. There are no standards for ESG scores, so there is no way to compare them. The ESG modernization assessment tool consists of seven tabs, introduction, project information, wing table, scorecard for positive factor, scorecard for negative or neutral factor, summary sheet, and wing table editable. Jenny, is there an issue? Nope, I think we're back now. I just was receiving a number of comments from folks that they weren't receiving the sound and we were frozen, but we're back. We're good. Okay. Uh, sorry for the technical issues, uh, which I didn't expect it. <laughs> Hopefully, we're good. We'll be okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll continue. All right. The introduction tab uh, details the tool's purpose, scope, timing, expected outcomes, and tool instructions. The project information tab allows the evaluator to enter information about the project. The team developed a framework that contained three levels, which is level one, level two, and level three for assessing ESG modernization. As the figure shows, each level is composed of multiple factors. Level one reflects the three ESG factors. Level two contains level factors, the first layer under the ESG division, four environmental, three social, and four governance level two factors. Level three includes complex and comprehensive elements that the user will consider when evaluating the sustainability impact of a project. Again, following the ESG division, 18 level three factors fall on the environmental, 11 for social, and 13 for governance. The weighing table tab uses a weighting of three, which is moderate, uh, as its uh, basic setting. You can accept this uh, setting and move on to the next, level, uh, next tab by click continue to next tab indicated by number one. Alternatively, the weighing table adjust, uh, editable tab allows users to adjust the relative importance of ESG factors to reflect project characteristics or company objectives, business drivers, or ESG initiatives. To edit weights, 
click the uh, to change the average awaiting, please click here, the orange button marked by number two, which takes the user to the weighing table editable tab. Here shows how the weighing table editable tabs uh, pull down menu enables the user to adjust the relative importance of each ESG factor across the three levels. And the weights uh, in each menu range from zero to five, which represent not applicable or no effect to very high. Once the user has finished editing the factor, the tool will use the custom weights in its scoring calculations. In the scorecard for positive factors tab, user can evaluate all 42 positive level three factors. And the tool provides the detailed implementations of potential mobilization impacts for each factor. So see example here. For the water availability from a construction perspective, perspective factor. The explanation is mobilization can be more efficient than the method used at the site as the motor yard often have water uh, recirculation and reduction method. And you can find the full list of these uh, explanation in the report. In the tool, the user needs to review the project attributes related to the ESG factors and select the most appropriate project attributes from the pull-down options. The pull-down options provide for each factor support three possible scores, an ESG project attribute with a high potential impact on modernization, which will get a score of five, a medium potential impact, score of three, a low potential impact, score one. Here's the example of project attribute that have a potential positive impact on mobilization. For the water availability from the construction perspective factor, the project attribute that has high potential impact on mobilization is no portable water or water for construction work. Medium potential impact attribute is limited portable water. And low potential impact project attribute is the project site has plentiful water with no restriction. Again, the full list can be found in the report. Next, determine how significantly the following mobilization strategy mitigates its ESG line item by selecting yes, partially, or no from the pull down menu beside each cell from low mobilization, which is pre assembly medium mobilization, parse, skis, motor control centers, and high mobilization, partial mobilization plus PAUs and BPUs. This quick demonstration video shows how it works. Once you complete, the tool will automatically calculate the score for each element based on the information you provide. Moving on, we have the scorecard for negative or neutral tab, which is similar to the previous tab, but focuses on, on the ESG factor where mobilization may have a negative or neutral impact. As you came from uh, this video, you can just choose the appropriate project attribute from the drop menu drop down menu and indicate their impact on modernization strategy on a scale of zero to five. Once you complete, the tool will then calculate the rank of negative or neutral factor automatically. The summary tab provides the ESC tools results. This tab shows assessment score for all positive factors grouped by their level one factors environmental, social, and governance, and all scores by mobilization strategy, which is low, medium, or high mobilization. The strategy with the highest score is the best mobilization strategy to benefit from or mitigate the impacts of ESG factors. In this example, as highlighted in red boxes, 
low modularization with pre-assembly is the best modularization strategy as it has the highest overall score. Now, here's the recap of today's webinar. The implementation resource offers a comprehensive guide and tools to modularization business case analysis and ESG modularization assessment tool. These three tools empower users to make informed decisions regarding modularization in capital projects. By leveraging these tools, you can understand how modularization affects different aspects of a project. This knowledge empowers you to make informed decisions, ultimately leading to the optimization of benefits in your modularization initiatives. If you have, down, have not downloaded them yet, please download them from Research Team 396 as a knowledge base. Here's the QR code to the Research Team uh, knowledge base where you can download them. Also, if you have downloaded our tool from the CI annual conference or have uh, the version one, Please download the latest tools as we have corrected some minor mistakes and improved some wordings. Thank you for listening to my webinar. Again, I'm sorry for the technical issues. No problem. I think it worked out just fine. Thank you, Dr. Choi. I'm just noticing a little T-Rex in the middle of that QR code. I love it. <laughs> okay, we have quite a few questions. First one coming in. What, in your opinion, is the highest percentage of modularization that can be achieved on a project? They say they're asking because often clients want a certain percentage of in-country value. And I believe that ICV relates specifically to projects in the UAE. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, accomplishing 100% is technically impossible. There will be always a certain portion of, um, of, of work that needs to be done at the stick build. The, it will be varied by the site location. Uh, of course, uh, just for the technically, yeah, you can accomplish 70% to 80%. If, if you are considering the extreme project site, like which is located in Antarctica, you may, uh, may accomplish higher percentage. But in general, yes, uh, the, the range will be, uh, 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 in, in most cases, so you may be able to accomplish um, 40 to 60% of orientation. Fantastic. Okay, our next question says, the most significant barrier our team has encountered when considering modularization is having sufficient frozen scope definition early enough to enable modularization. I didn't see any scheduled questions in the input that you put forward uh, in your presentation. Can you address that? Yes, uh, thank you for that question. Yes, uh, the, I have slightly mentioned that uh, these two won't guarantee you a success uh, in your molar project. When you, uh, I highly recommend you to check the, the previous research team report, which is from research team 283. In that report, they have provided the modularization critical success factors, which includes the one that you have mentioned, the freezing your uh, scope. And there are many other critical success factors that you need to accomplish to successfully execute your project. As the, the this recent research team, uh, 396, focused on developing the business case analysis methods and the tools, we didn't discuss in detail, but we have also indicated in the report which uh, about the barriers for implementing the modernization, which is in, in the final report. And so I highly recommend you to check those out as we also provided the enablers, barrier breakers for that uh, as well. Fantastic. Okay. I have an ESG related question. So the ESG assessment tool is qualitative. Do you think there will be a way to compare this ESG tool to others in industry? Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, indeed, uh, the, this 
tool is a qualitative uh, tool. I believe we need a qualitative tool to uh, make it more effective. I hope that the CI can fund the, the next new research team to work on it. But no, uh, this tool has uh, its focus on the specific uh, project attributes and the ESG factors related to molarization. This tool cannot be used, uh, 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 the score cannot be used. Oh boy. <laughs> Hopefully the glitch will work itself through. Thank you for your patience. Oh, he's back. <laughs> okay. Oh my I was, God, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's okay. I think we got the gist of the answer. I think we do have one more question. If okay. Folks are, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Like, no, that's okay. That's not a problem at all. Oh, actually, we have uh -huh. two two questions here. One is, how will this s? Oh, what does it do? How will this calculate quantitative capex decisions? Uh, pardon the the question, the question is, is how will this calculate quality or quantitative capex decisions um i'm not sure this uh, question is referring to the tool two or esg tool assuming that uh -huh. Related to the Venus case analysis tool two, which is a, uh, maybe they might uh, escalate. Maybe it was how will this escalate? Maybe there's just a typo. Escalate quantitative oh. capex decision. Oh, so it's uh, related to ESG tool. Then, yes, uh, for the uh, the ESG tool, yes, since it's the qualitative tool, it basically helps you which free assembly options will be the best options to. Uh, for their com uh, project or the, their company, but uh, it should be converted to uh, quantitative uh, cost as well. That which we did, we were not able to do uh, do that in this uh, research. But there are certain ways to uh, convert some of the the important ESG related mm -hmm. uh, factors into a cost and which should be considered in the uh, tool one and tool two as well to uh, make the best uh, capex decision wonderful okay one final question are there any official international standards for the modularization design oh no uh, as far as i know i uh -huh. do not aware that uh, there is a standard international standard for a modernization design that is often has, uh, cited multiple times that uh, we need international standards uh, for modernization to uh, enable more uh, higher uh, use of modernization but unfortunately maybe my other uh, research team members may be able to help me with this, but as far as I know, there's no standards. Uh, I think you are correct. You know more than I, so I'm sure that is the right answer. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, I'd like to thank you personally, Dr. Choi, for joining us today, sharing this information. Uh, thank everyone out there for tuning in. If you are a CII member and you'd like to be more involved in the modularization community within CII, Feel free to reach out to me, Jenny Bien. You can find my contact information on the CII website. Uh, yeah, we have somebody chiming in here from the research team. Uh, Michael Clark with KBR says, nope, no international standards. So <laughs> we've got the answer there. Uh, again, thank you all. We look forward to seeing you at the next CII webinar. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. We're always here to help. Thank you very much. Jenny, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.